Today we're going to talk about the standard response protocol. You've probably seen these posters around your school or in classrooms. You've probably noticed the icons. We are going to talk about what these four icons mean. Schools across the country are adopting a standard to enhance student and staff safety during an incident or emergency. The key is that there is a simple shared lexicon between students, staff, and first responders. And when used, everyone involved shares the same expectations. All right, what's a lexicon? It's the words in a language, a vocabulary, if you will. Who are we sharing this lexicon with? We start with first responders. So if something happens at our school, you'll know what we are doing. The same language is shared with students, so you know what to do. Teachers and staff are given the same training. And it's also important to tell your parents what we do here at school. It's called the standard response protocol. And it's based on four actions that we take during a critical incident. Lockout, lockdown, evacuate, and shelter. Each action is followed by a directive. Lockout, secure the perimeter. Lockdown, locks, lights, out of sight. Evacuate to the announced location. Shelter for a hazard using a safety strategy. Every action then has specific instructions of what to do in a crisis. When these are called on the PA system, the action and directives are repeated. Now, this implies the intercom can be heard. So let us know if you're in a room where the intercom doesn't work. Lockout, secure the perimeter. Lockout, secure the perimeter. Why? There is a threat outside of the building. Might be criminal activity, or civil unrest, or a dangerous animal outside. Here's what happens. Staff will lock all outside doors, and no one is allowed in or out. Let's start with student instructions on what to do in a lockout. First one is simple. Get in the building. When students or staff are outside, how are they notified? Radio system? PA system? If a lockout lasts into recess or lunch, no one in or out. So we're staying in the building. Same thing is true at the end of the school day. Depending on what's going on, we may have to stay in the building or students that walk home may have to call their parents to be picked up. Let's look at what a teacher should do during a lockout. Bring students inside. If there are exterior doors in the classroom, make sure they are locked. Teachers may be asked to check if nearby exterior doors are propped open. Increased situational awareness. You know, be attentive. Teachers should also verify that everyone is still in class. It is a good idea to note the time that attendance was taken. Business as usual. Lockdown. Locks, lights, out of sight. Lockdown. Locks, lights, out of sight. Lockdown is used when there is a threat inside the building. Maybe it's a crazy person, or maybe a non-custodial parent, or something worse, an armed intruder, or some other danger. Okay, let's look at what students should do. First, stay out of sight from the corridor window. How do you know you're out of sight? If you can't see out the corridor window, no one in the hall can see you. Also, sit on the floor and get low. A locked door is a proven time barrier. In active violence events, rarely, if ever, has someone been hurt who has been behind a locked classroom door. Be absolutely silent. Turn your phone off in the initial stages of a lockdown. If there is an actual lockdown, you'll get a chance to text your parents in a while. Do not open the door for anyone. Administrators or law enforcement will unlock the door and release the room. We don't know if someone in the hall is being held captive. Let's look at what teachers should do in a lockdown. Teachers should verify that not only the main classroom door, but any adjoining doors can be secured from the inside. When you hear lockdown, locks, lights, out of sight, depending on what you see and hear, you might want to sweep the hallway for students. If the threat is close to your classroom, focus on getting the door locked and closed as quickly as possible. A locked classroom door is a proven lifesaver. Turn out the lights. Usually there is no need to raise or lower the outside window shades because the threat is inside the building. 
The goal is to get out of sight behind a locked door as quickly as possible. More law enforcement agencies are recommending not sliding red and green cards under the door. The reasoning is twofold. First, they won't believe the message until they have verified the status of the classroom. And you are giving too much information to the bad guy. Be silent and maintain student silence. Turn off your phone. A lockdown cannot be ended with a PA announcement. It only ends with an administrator or police opening the door and releasing the room. If you can, take attendance. Note if you have missing students or extra students swept from the hall. Note the time. You probably won't need to do anything with the roster at this point, but we're creating a chain of custody and this will be useful over the life cycle of the event. Evacuate is how to move students in an orderly fashion from point A to point B. A fire drill is really evacuate out of the building. With the SRP, evacuate is always followed by a location. For instance, evacuate to the gym, evacuate to the gym. So here's what students do. Usually, you leave your stuff behind. Be sure to listen to any new directions. Teachers, there may be cases where you lead students. There may be cases where you follow students out. In a police-led evacuation, you'll probably be asked to lead the students. Teachers, at the evacuation area, take attendance and note the time. In a police-led evacuation, it's important to keep your hands visible to the officers. Most likely, you will be asked to leave your stuff behind. If your phone is in your pocket, bring it. If it's in your purse or backpack, you may not be given an opportunity to grab it. Don't be surprised if the officers are loud and demanding. They don't know the extent of the incident yet. They will give you direct instructions that you should follow. Again, be sure to keep your hands visible. All that goes for teachers as well. There may be circumstances where you can't bring your purse, briefcase, or backpack. Also, grab your emergency kit with the attendance sheet and the red and green card, and your phone. At the evacuation assembly area, take attendance. If you were able to take attendance during lockdown, verify students in the assembly area against the roster you created during lockdown. If everything is okay, show the green card. Some of you may have heard the term shelter in place. Unfortunately, there are many different things that shelter in place could mean. With the SRP, we shortcut it to state the hazard and the safety strategy. So what's a hazard? Something dangerous. It could be environmental, like a tornado or earthquake. It might be something like a chemical spill nearby. Your safety strategy is what you do in response to the hazard. Public address might be just the hazard and safety strategy, or it could be shelter for the stated hazard using the stated safety strategy. In either case, we repeat it. For example, severe weather or tornado get to the storm shelter or your designated severe weather area. During a hazard, listen for instructions. The situation may be very dynamic. Always be prepared for the unexpected. During a shelter event, teachers should try to take attendance and note the time. Those are the actions, directives, and instructions for the standard response protocol. That's what those icons mean. It's a shared vocabulary between students, staff, and first responders during any type of crisis or emergency here at school.